This is a video that I should not be making. Today was really challenging and I was dealing, <laughs> and I am dealing with a lot of um, just emotional confusion, maybe that's the word to put it. Um, but I was just journaling today and topics of shame and self-love and self-acceptance came up and I just want to talk through them honestly and um, I have some thoughts here that I want to share with you. I want to share with you some of my journal entry that I thought was might be interesting to you and um, also I asked your questions for your questions on Instagram as well um, and so I'm just gonna dig into it. The reason that I say I shouldn't be making this video is that I feel like I'm so far away from in some ways I'm so far away from actually like um, figuring this out for myself shame, self-love, self-acceptance, how it all works itself out, how a Christian should look at it, how a Christian should approach it, how we can forgive ourselves, all these different things that I just feel like I'm so ill-equipped to talk about in some ways. I'm going to do my best um, and I'm just going to speak honestly and and maybe let you into some of my questions that I still, still have. I guess some, the first thing that came to my mind, at least about self-acceptance is this lie that I don't know maybe you've heard it too but I know I definitely have it's this idea that if we accept ourselves as we are right we're Christians we are saved by the blood of Christ and all of a sudden if we start accepting ourselves right even though we still sin right we, we accept ourselves then we'll stop growing and progressing in faith and life basically we'll get lazy and maybe we'll we'll veer into sin my thought is that I just realized that this is a total lie. Like the fact is, is that until we actually can accept ourselves as we are, as Christ accepts us, then, then we will never heal. It's not about like, cause I think there's this, there's this idea and, and I have it in my own heart too. I feel like sometimes it's like, if I ever get like, if I ever accept, accept myself, right? As I am, then I'll get complacent and I'll get lazy and I won't do what I need to do. And so I'm going to have this kind of looming shame, like almost using my shame as, as a tool to get productive and to accomplish things kind of like a, I don't know, like a, a slave master, an inner critic, uh, whatever you want to call it. This thing that is over your shoulder, that's telling you, you are not enough. And I want to make this clear. I think when people talk about, um, you know, us being enough or not enough, because there's lots of confusion going on within the Christian community uh, about this. Like, are we enough? Are we not enough? So in a moral sense, the Bible is clear that in a moral sense, we are not enough, right? That is why we need Jesus. That's why we need him to take the punishment on himself. But from a personhood stance, that's not the right word, from a from a personhood perspective, we are enough through Christ. In Christ, we are made whole. And so I don't think there's any problem with, with having it in your heart, in your mind as a Christian, that through Christ, you are enough. I think people understand this as like, oh, well, that means you're going to start being prideful and you're going to start like believing that you can do it on your own. It's like, no, did you forget the through Christ part? Because I think language is important. And I think if we continually tell ourselves that we are not enough, even with when we have Christ, that's like shame talking. Like the devil will try to convince us that we are enough without Christ. And then it will try to convince us that we're not enough with Christ. And so honestly, I'm like, okay, you, I mean, <laughs> this is just the basics, right? We got to accept ourselves. Now that's just like the, the facts, but actually doing it is so much more difficult. And this is where I have actually like an, ex I, because for your, for you, right? You, you are so much more likely and it's so much easier to accept other people and their flaws and their issues. Like you see your friends, you see your family members and they have their own stuff going on, but it's so much easier to look past that in, in a lot of ways than your own stuff. Because the thing is, is you have to live with you. 
you know everything about yourself. Well, most, most things, most things. God knows you better than you know yourself, but you know a lot of things about yourself. And that makes it that much more challenging to actually accept yourself. I don't have an answer on that. I think this kind of segues into the idea of self-love. Like when we talk about self-acceptance, it automatically, okay, how does self-love enter this equation? Because there's been some people within the Christian evangelical community that have been on a tirade against self-love and how it's portrayed in media, in culture, the trends, um, self-care, all that kind of thing. And I agree with a lot of that stuff. I agree that it has turned into kind of a a toxic trend, um, a self-centered, selfish trend. Um, But I don't think we ought to throw out the whole, like, not necessarily the baby with the bathwater, because I don't think that's a great analogy in this case. But you know what I mean? Like, when the culture... uh, When the culture has some sort of movement, they're addressing a problem that's actually there, but they're using things that are, they're they're going about it in the wrong way. A lot of examples to this. It's like minimalism, right? Minimalism has become kind of a cult, but they're trying to address real issues of of people being greedy and, and selfish and stuff obsessed. So they're like, they go to minimalism. That's kind of their savior. When it comes to self love and self care, there is an issue. There's an actually an issue because people um, need to be caring about, okay, how am I actually treating my body and also treating my mental state? And how can I be healthier in relationships and take care of myself in this? And uh, yes, people have gone off the rails. I definitely think that's true. But at the same time, my question is, is that if we as Christians are going to throw out the the idea of self-love altogether and whatever that means for you, right? If we're going to throw that out, then what are we left with? Are we just with left with like tolerating ourselves? Like, is that what Jesus called us to, to just tolerate ourselves to like, you know, because we're just that terrible, no good garbage. We just like, you know, we're stuck in this body. We're stuck with who we are. So we might as well just try to tolerate it until we get to heaven. I don't think that's, I I just can't believe that that's what God is calling us into. Like when he made us a new creation, I don't think he called us to despise that new creation or just to tolerate that new creation. I don't think it's, I think the thing is, it's like we, we automatically attribute the fact that if we love something, right, then we're like ranking it above other things. Like if I love myself, that means I love myself more than God or I love myself more than other people. It's like, no, like I I, I do think you can love who you are and who God's creating you to be. And that can be properly directed at God because it's only through him that, that he's moving in us. Right? Like, I think that can be okay. But if we're just going to dispose of it all together, I just don't think that's what we're called to just like self toleration. I think there's more to that because the sad truth, and I've experienced this in my own life, is that so many Christians are walking around that have grown up in Christian conservative circles that are so bogged down by shame and guilt and this idea that they are they are basically pieces of trash that they are so insignificant to God like we got the holiness thing right we got the repentance thing right but what we didn't get right was understanding how God sees us and how he loves us and how he accepts us and how we don't need to be in this self-loathing, um, self-punishment state of mind just because that's how horrible we are and that's what we deserve. Like, where's the freedom? Where's grace? Where's the healing? Because I think healing only can take place when we actually can like begin to accept reality and the reality is, is that we are forgiven. We are accepted. We are loved. Healing will never come if it's this forceful, judgmental self-condemnation that's all about you need to fix your life now. You need to fix yourself. Get yourself together, you piece of trash. Like you're not measuring up to where you should be. You'll never be enough. All these words, this self-talk is destroying people from the inside out. And based on the, 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 the messages that I got, this is a bigger issue than I thought. 
We can properly understand that God has called us to love other people and love him above all. But we also need to remember that God God hasn't called us to hate ourselves, to wake up every day and despise who we are, to feel like we, we are obligated to feel bad about ourselves because we're not there yet, because we're not measuring up to where we think we should be. Like, I don't think we should live our lives. <laughs> Believe me, I'm trying to work on this, but it's like we have these goals and these these things in front of us and this this idea of who we want to be and where we want to go and, and, this, and the things we want to achieve. I don't think God wants us to only begin to accept ourselves when we've made it there. Because that, we'll never get to that point where we're perfectly content, where we give ourselves a break because we've done enough, because we've accomplished enough, because we made enough money, because we have enough friends, because we have enough popularity. We'll never get to that point where we actually give ourselves license to accept ourselves. I mean, we treat God this way too. We think we have to give God license to love ourselves. Like we got to do enough stuff. Like we got to clean our lives up. Even when we're a Christian, like, like each day is a, is a test. And if we don't pass that test, if we're not smart enough, if we don't get the grade, if, if we don't perform well enough at work, if, if people don't like us enough, then that day God was kind of disappointed in us that we're that day we're a little bit less of a person. I want to get into your guys' questions, but first I just want to read this journal entry for you. I've kind of redacted some things because some things are a little too personal for the online space, but I thought this might. Um, honestly, I don't know what this is going to do, so let me just read it. Maybe the fact that every time I break down, I judge myself for doing so is part of my problem. This isn't very good grammar, by the way. Maybe if I didn't shame myself so much for feeling bad, I could actually explore these negative emotions and begin to heal. But I haven't given myself license to do that yet. Instead, I go into a state of panic where I, I feel like I need to fix my life right here and now. It's my job to devise and execute a plan that will bring me from zero to hero, from failure to success, from average to exceptional. But these days, my anxiety tells me that I'm on the edge of losing everything that I have. But also, that ultimately, I'll amount to nothing at all. What are you telling yourself throughout the day? What are the common strings of thought that you meditate on? Is it panic about where you are and where you should be? Is it fear about what is to come? Is it regret and shame for the past? Do you listen to the voice that continually tells you that you're not working hard enough, that you're not enough, that God couldn't love you because of what you've done? We're killing ourselves and we think it's good. That's the sickness. That's the sick part of it. We are. We know it's bad, but we, we, we don't really believe it. We still think that it's helping us. We, we still think that holding on to the shame is helping us because it moves us. We still think that holding on to the guilt is helping us because we think we deserve to, to suffer. We think we, we, we have to live in this, that this is what we deserve, that this is our destiny. But we're forgetting the power of the gospel. Like through Christ He's taken all of that on himself. We don't need to be bossed around by the inner critic, the inner voice that, that continues to weigh us down day and night, that tells us to never accept ourselves, that we'll never be enough until we get to this certain point in our lives or we've done this thing or made up for our past. We've convinced ourselves that our anxiety is doing ourselves a favor, that our fear is doing ourselves a favor. That our shame is doing ourselves 
a favor. How do I become more positive without feeling like I'm shoving my emotions away? I kind of been asking myself that same question recently. I want to be a naturally, let's say positive person, optimistic person, but I find myself trying to honing in constantly on everything that is wrong, everything that is going straight, everything that's not going perfectly, even when things are going up, right? They're not going up fast enough or they're not going up fast enough as yesterday or things like our, my brain, our brains are so screwed up in this way. I think I believe that I don't even want to try to become a more positive person. Like, I don't think that's, that's the, the, the goal is to be positive. It's to explore these different emotions that we're feeling because they, I think Emotions in a lot of ways are triggers for certain things going on underneath the surface. Now, I don't know a lot about this stuff, but this is just what I'm thinking. Is that if I'm feeling sad or if I'm feeling depressed, maybe instead of tearing myself up about it or judging myself or shaming myself, like I said in the, in the journal entry, that if I just, I was okay with it, that I wasn't seeing it as like a, a bad thing or a sinful thing. It was just how I was feeling. And I was kind to myself and you were kind to yourself. You say, okay, I'm not feeling that great today. I'm going to do what I need to get done. And I'm going to do, um, I'm going to act in healthy ways and not go out and binge on different things just to ease the pain or distract myself, but rather exploring these things through prayer and journaling. And maybe through that, maybe through exploring these emotions, we'll begin to find some healing. I think that's the, I, I think we, to preemptively try to be positive when you naturally want to feel or you're feeling in a particular day bad or sad, I think we just need to embrace it and accept it and 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 be compassionate to ourselves in the in the midst of it and speak to the comforter of our souls who isn't immediately going to take away the pain or make us feel happy there's a sick twisted idea within the christian church that through god we are always supposed to be happy we should always have a smile on our face. I remember posting a picture years ago and I don't know, this was, I wasn't smiling in the picture. And I remember somebody commenting, doesn't look like you're displaying the joy of the Lord, Lord very well. And I just remember laughing at it. I just remember laughing because, because it's so twisted to think that we as Christians are supposed to have a smile on our face all the time because it's inauthentic. It's, it's not, it's not right. Number one, because that's not how people operate. If you have a smile on your face all the time, I don't know what kind of emotional walls you have closed off or delusions you've got yourself caught in, but real people feel bad. And a lot of people feel bad a significant amount of the time. And I'm not saying that's perfectly healthy and you shouldn't do anything about it. I'm just saying that, that to force yourself or to shame yourself or to judge yourself because you're feeling that way and, oh, I shouldn't feel this way as a Christian. God's given me so much. Like you're adding on to the problem. So if a moment you could just take a breath and be compassionate with yourself and just ask God to be with you in the midst of it, not necessarily changing how you feel, just be with me. I don't know, man. I think that's the beginning. Ways to move forward in life when you made a mistake and can't apologize to someone. That's something that I dealt with for a long time, honestly. Um, I felt like I didn't do a good job with a certain relationship in my life. And it was when I was a bit younger. And that was something that kind of stuck with me. I felt a lot of guilt for that. It was also kind of motivation to do better in the future. I mean, ultimately, it's like, 
I guess how I processed it was I can't go back. I can't fix it. I can't do as all that I know to do now. I was a different person then. I didn't know all the things that I know now. And ultimately, I keep God's sovereignty in mind. He obviously wanted me to learn something in that. You know, maybe it might take a while to figure out what that is, but maybe there's a clear lesson. And honestly, um, God does give second chances in a way. People re-enter your life down the road. And so I don't think all hope is lost and, and you know, this will be lingering over you for a long time. I think time has a good, a good part to do with it. And um, I just think that if you're, if you're experiencing the shame and guilt of it and your and with anything really, and this negative self-talk that you can get yourself into, if you're repeating this to yourself daily, like that's a habit that, that you need to be intentional about breaking. And so just to kind of give a, a personal example, and this wasn't related to this issue specifically, but every time I would do something that was just like a, a little mistake, right? Not even like a moral mistake, like a sin. It was just like a mistake. Um, my internal dialogue was always, oh, you're an idiot. You're a loser. How could you be so dumb? Um, it would bring up past things. I would bring up past things in my mind, key moments where I either felt embarrassed or that I had said something wrong or that I just felt like, just really like, oh man, what an idiot, right? And I had that kind of internal dialogue playing for a long time. And I kind of how I broke out of that or, you know, I, I've come a long way since then, since I had that kind of a consistent daily thing was every time I would say that every time I would think, cause it would be immediate. It would be like, okay, I do something and I'm like, oh, idiot, oh, dumb. Oh, you're so stupid. I would come back and I say, no, no, that's just a mistake. That does not define you. That's not who you are. That's just a mistake. And it's okay. Everyone make, makes mistakes. Like as, as, as dumb as, as this sounds, we need to be okay with sounding dumb to ourselves because the fact is we need to hear this stuff. You need to tell yourself it's okay. You need to be okay with telling yourself, I'm here with you. You're okay. You're safe. When your anxiety is going out of whack, when your shame is just accusing you, when old past guilt is coming up and accusing you of all sorts of things, that's when you strike back with words of truth. No, I'm forgiven. No, God loves me. No, I'm accepted. No, I'm a new creation. No, that does not define me. I was thinking about this the other day, that if I believed everything that I said, especially around this issue of self-acceptance, self-love, um, the shame, dealing with shame, I would, I would be great. I would be so good. Like, I would have no issues at all because I just believe it and then my life would be changed. But the thing is, is that actually beginning to believe this stuff, like let's talk about God loving you, right? Like you can have an intellectual knowledge that God loves you, but how does that play itself out in your daily life? Do you act like he does love you? Because most of us don't. Most of us act as if it's just us out here, as if we're individuals that are trying to make it out on our own, that it's up to us to make our lives work. In terms of ourselves, we can have um, an intellectual knowledge that we're okay. Like, okay, you know what? I'm not, I, I kind of like who I am. But then we still hold this unrealistic expectation over our heads. We hold past guilt and shame and things that we've done over our heads. And we treat those things as if they're speaking truth. We treat those things as if they are like the objective um, leaders of, of what is true about ourselves. People let these things, these voices, these past guilt and shame and current just like lack of acceptance ruin their lives. I was thinking about this today. If I, if I could ask God for one thing, what would it be? And if I'm honest, it would be peace. Because it used to be, it used to be success in the terms that I defined it. Because then I thought, you know what, if I got success in the terms that I defined, then I would be happy. Then I would be um, perfectly content. 
with, with where I was at. Everything would be in line. But as time has gone on and goals have been passed and moved about and rearranged and I realized that the things that I thought would satisfy me, at least for a bit, they don't. And there's still this uneasiness in my soul that needs something else. And I know what that thing is. It's God. And we know what that thing is. Like, it's God. So it's not a lack of intellectual knowledge. It's like a heart knowledge to actually step into that, to actually believe that. I have the intellectual knowledge that God is what I need, that God accepts me, that God loves me. And that should flow into me accepting myself, into me being okay with me, being all right with me, to giving me license to, to like who I am, to love who I am. But I don't believe it. but I don't believe it. And I think that's the crux of the issue is that we don't believe it yet. I know this video is all over the place and I don't exactly know what you got from this video, but I just knew, I just know that, <laughs> that God was moving me to make this and talk. So I hope you were encouraged by it. I just want to read here from John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. The Lord has given us everything. His truth, his love, his grace, his acceptance. He has said those things that we may have peace. Now we're called to take heart, to believe him, because he has overcome the world. He's overcome all those voices that are calling us back into shame, back into guilt. He's, he's overcome all those voices that say that we'll never be forgiven, that we shouldn't forgive ourselves, that we shouldn't accept ourselves. No, he's overcome it all. And he's given us freedom to follow him. That doesn't mean we're not gonna experience challenging emotions trials but it does mean that we can look to him for that peace that he offers us daily giving everything to him submitting it all to him i hope you're encouraged by this video thank you to everyone on patreon that makes this content possible you guys are a tremendous blessing to me and so many people that are able to be uh, blessed by this content thank you guys so much and i will see you next time god bless